appreciate your participation in Dr. Lopez's really good. I hope all of you enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. The song, the dance, the story, everything was good. So those who didn't turn up, you missed it. Alright, but next time it will be nice if you can take part in all the events that we do for you. Free of cause is nice, you know. It's part of your memory bank and all that kind of things. Anyway, so we are here for a specific reason. Okay, don't a little less, post the body. But here I've got a uh, I'll introduce you. Okay. So we've got a very special guest here. Okay. So this is in the series of getting local resource people to interact with you. Okay. We are working on that, so at least you get you get an idea about what is happening beyond your classroom, beyond planning form, beyond this vision. That is one is very important to know. Okay. Uh, second thing is also we are working on the placements. Okay, so it's just it, it will get end to end kind of program. You take admission out here, then we, we keep counseling you, we keep getting people to talk to you, and, uh, and thereafter we will do your placement also. Alright. But uh, to take the decision to go to the right place, uh, you need people to tell you what is there outside. Okay, so over to Mr. Dansu, we will introduce our guest as well. Nice session. And please have an interactive session also. If you have any questions, feel free. Yeah. It should be absolutely informal. Okay? Learning takes place in informal habits. If it's very formal, formal type, you know, stuff like that, learning doesn't take place. You feel absolutely free to ask questions, interact, you stop it whatever you want, and uh, you go very informal in that way. Okay, but at the end of the day, learning has to take place. Alright. So over to Mr. Sur and over to Mr. Bhagavan. So very good morning to all of you, sir, and Sekhajan uh, Kumar and dear students. So I have the privilege to introduce our guest speaker for the day. Mr. Kalyan Kumar is a co-founder and CEO of Social Catalyzers, in bracket it's called as SOCAT, a cutting-edge social media and influencer marketing agency. Kalyan, sir, founded Social Catalyzers in 2016. With 20 plus years of experience across various business verticals, this multi-talented new age marketer is credited for the launch of over seven brands during his career. His previous stints span from being the CMO for mid-size firms and startups to leading marketing roles in new technology areas such as the internet, telecom, mobile, BS online gaming and extended reality technologies. As a student, he pursued his passion for music while working with the Rock Street Journal, a rock and roll magazine, as a manager, events and promotions. Later, he joined the gaming business vertical of Sifi Limited as a marketing manager and business head for gaming. He also served as the CMO for RummyCircle.com. He holds a PGTBM in Marketing and Behavioral Sciences degree from IIM Calcutta and a BTEC degree in Mechanical Engineering from IIT Delhi. Both are the topmost and prestigious institutes of uh, India. He lives in Kalimpong, West Bengal. Now thanks to all the WFH owing to COVID and enjoys music, listening and playing. He has been playing the guitar since engineering days and has often imposed himself with leading musicians in the country or just at home. Other than that, he loves listening to podcasts and audiobooks on rationality, philosophy, science, meditation, and human welfare in his free time. So, before I arrive, sir, uh, he's been featured in TED Talks, and our students will get an opportunity to uh, view your video on YouTube of TED Talks, which you had. Uh, Delivered to these students of Christ College Bangalore this morning, and also they had an opportunity to uh, again see one of your videos. You are interacting about what you are doing, yes. so yeah. they have got some brief idea about you, what you do. And now it's our honor and privilege uh, to have you in our institution and follow to you, sir. Yeah.
be a show of hands or other than understanding of what are the streams uh, here that you guys are from, largely. What are their marketing, there's uh, operations, or there's finance. Are there any specializations that you guys have done? And what's the split in the, the, the big three specializations? <laughs> Nice. Uh, in fact, the other day I got a forward, a uh, very nice forward uh, that I wanted to kind of read out. But basically, it's a, it's a very simple thing that says, uh, you know, all this club membership that I was given and introduced by, I went to IIT and I went to IIM. And I just want to, and there is a lot of pressure you will have when you go out there. And there's a lot of pressure you will get. And uh, all I want to set you at ease with is hey, it really doesn't matter that much. Uh, you know, uh, I, 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 by example, I studied here in Kupals in Kursa. And we used to have a lot of, uh, like every class, you know, there would be back ventures, there would be the geeks. I was a geek. I was a poor kid man in the class. <laughs> yes. I had no options. I was not good at sports. I was underweight in every way, so I had to, I was I had no option but to study. And, and be the teacher's pet. Uh, you know. But uh, what I realized was we all did well, we all went to great institutions, some of them went to all sorts of other colleges, and we all did well. Everyone eventually when you reach your late thirties, early forties, <coughs> you just look around and call up your old friends and most of them, almost all of them will be doing well. So it doesn't matter whether you're a back bench or you're a front bench or you're from a top institution. So, so I want to put you at rest with that. The second one is, uh, <coughs> you know, uh, I try not to use the F word too much all the time and over your corporate life you start using that a lot. Especially when you deal with people, when you deal with stuff, and you want to, you know. I. It's. Uh, you discuss something like 
<laughs> we've been beaten already for a lot. Uh, and uh, just, just, just go for your entrance exams. And so I did. I appeared for all the entrance exams. As you, you, I didn't even know what I did. My elder brother was in Rurki and so he said, listen, uh, just fill out these forms and appear you are better than me at maths and science and all, so you have a better chance. And that's how, so I found myself, like I have been walking through, through pure luck into these institutions. Uh, I, I'm saying that very honestly, there's no humility here. I'm just saying that I knew in school there were guys who were smarter than me, better than me, and they did not make it to IIT. There were guys dumber than me and smarter than me who made it to IITs later, uh, especially in the IITs. So that's the second myth I want to burst is when you go to these elite institutions, you'll find just the normal people just like you. And it's not just the academics. Most of us who got into these places were so focused about that one little thing about variety, you know, it was PCM. And uh, for MB actually it's, it got simpler. All I needed was to my class 10 maths. You know, I just, because you were academic so much and you know, the other funny uh, thing I, should, uh, I want to tell you is um, we used to get three months holiday in the break until school. It was the worst time of my life. It was my dad who would make me sit for six hours a day. I used to finish the maths syllabus for the next year, three-fourths of it, before I went to school. So even if I was an idiot, I would look good in class. <laughs> because you know the teachers are starting in class four, you start with the geometry, with the, with the theorems. And the teacher says, okay, now I'm going to talk to you about congruent triangles. And uh, here is, who can do this? Yeah, small, oily head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I mean, obviously, I was just, I was not asking you guys to prove it, I was at this. So I went, I would do that. So that was my gateway to things. But that's how. Uh, and, and how did I get into IIM? I want to share a very fun story. So after IIT, uh, I scared the hell out of my dad again. I was so much into music. It was so much blood and passion. All through IIT, the one thing I didn't do was engineering. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be at every campus in Delhi. I was. And because IIT was such an elite campus, it had the biggest festival. So I would show up at every rock show from first year, make friends with the musicians, and I used to be so enamored by them because they used to have real guitars and electric guitars. Earlier all I had was Metallica and this and that and these had fancy guitars. And I see these musicians like Parikrama boys and all of that, who are really good friends. Uh, they have to shoot real guitars and I was like, my god, these guys are gods. I must help them. And for all the music talk that you heard in my introduction, I can't play for shit. You know, I just... Uh, but because I have such good friends, and if you play for 20 years, you seem like Anghamai Kananaji. We do not look good. And yeah, by the way, it helps you get... Uh, you know, Anghamai Kananaji is a very good uh, way to go about when you are on campus. You know, I'll, I'll not go much more on that. So, after IIT, I actually joined up with, and through IIT, I show up every show, organize shows, and this is what I'm trying to say, like, some of these weird things I did have been the nicest things in my career in terms of uh, when I used to have my job interviews, and then the story would come up, what the hell were you doing between IIT and IIM? So my dad thought I was preparing for an MBA, that's it. He refused to understand that there's a magazine called the Rock Street Journal, which was running and organizing shows and releasing albums for bands. All over, and that time the first dot com boom was happening. If you heard of all those fancy dot, the first internet boom happened in the late 90s. So we had lots of sponsors, we organized lots of shows. I used to even appear on the sound of like Z News and all of that. I was, I was exactly 51 kilos back then. And I should talk about indie music and how the future of Indian bands and how they should embrace local language, rock and metal and all of that. But my dad didn't think anything of it. He, he would introduce me to his friends and relatives as, Hey, I'm a chile, I'm a big 
and he's uh, preparing for CAT for the last three years. Uh, that's all he cared about. And that's, you're going to get such pressures, right? You're going to get that from your parents, you're going to see your peers doing well, you're going to see your uncles and relatives and friends, parents and all of that. Uh, <clears throat> I went where the wind blows and I just organized stuff. And how I got into IIM is also a funny thing. Uh, and just this is tell you how much luck matters. You know, we have for all the success that we had. Uh, my honest belief is I didn't choose which family I was involved. I didn't choose which schools I'll go. I was lucky. I didn't choose my parents. I didn't choose the city I'd be. I didn't choose the people I'd meet. So there's a lot of luck in anyone's success. So anyone who says I'm a self-made man and I made it again, I'm really busting some myths out here. It's 70% luck. And the next point and example is, so there was this batchmate of mine, two of, two of them, out of which there was one guy really smart. And he was my roommate during the three years. And are those materials still available when you prepare for an MBA, like a, like a CAT material, IMS material? Those and stuff, the best stuff. So, there's a place in Beisarai where you can get a copies of that much cheaper than the original stuff from IMS. So, he got two packets, one for me to prepare. I mean, mine remained unopened for three years. Uh, and he finished all that and it was really good. He got calls from all, all the. So, when I went for my CAT exam, I remember, oh God, like, to be honest, you know, I was. I was uh, Organizing a lot of the whole thing, and I was in the band. I has to be hammered very often till 4 a.m. And so I got up at 6. I said, Hey, Paul, I know your center. I'll drop you. I took him on the guy. I was the guy with the bike. Took him there. And, uh, and this is not to take away all the hard work everyone does. I'm just saying how lucky I was and how lucky a lot of people are. I took him to a center, and I reached my center to give the exam with two pencils in my pocket and a rubber. And that went up. That's all we needed. And I and uh, that's how I gave cat. Zero prep. And I didn't get calls from anybody except I am capital. So I was really furious. So what do these indoor guys and Lucknow guys think of themselves? They are like ranked lesser than that character and they didn't call me. <coughs> My friend Paul got a call from everywhere. And I am A, B, C, L, K, and no. We went for he went for all the interviews and group discussions, that's how you get it. And I went, oh, <coughs> just the one with the remote that I was in. And I got really lucky, and I'll tell you where I got lucky. So, all of a, I cleared my thing and I showed up and thing, and imagine Paul and me again, who were roommates from opposite <coughs> each other's room in the, in the hospital in Ankara. But where did I get lucky? There was a professor. So, I've been trying for three years also before that, for two years before. I would give care, I got one call from Bangalore, I didn't convert. Before that, I gave got a call from Bangalore, I didn't convert. So, always one campus would feel sorry for me and call me for another And then throw me out after that. <laughs> okay. So, this time, there was a, doc, there was a professor Mohanty who taught economics in IIM Capital. He was a weird guy. He really liked to speak proper English. So what, why would you like to do an MBA? I was like, sir, I am going to do an MBA. <laughs> <laughs> so, although like, you know, rock and roll and all of that was very cool. It's good for the fame, zero for the money back then. <laughs> so I, but the fame was helpful. I could go into pubs, I could go to nightclubs. The organizers would know all this guy. They went there, rock and roll, this, that. I would get free entry, free alcohol, free food and all that. <laughs> But you can only go this far. I used to get to see free movies also in Delhi. Uh, because there was... You, anybody been to Delhi? Familiar with Delhi? Priya movie, cinema? So the first few multiplexes. There, I helped, I would help any band with any music, with anything. I said, like, you guys are playing up. So the drama of one band was the ticket get. Say, hey, KK, sir. No, no, you're not paying for this. In Nagu go to watch any movie. Get free popcorn and coffee, and I'm like, my, this is like this is rock star stuff for me. That you know, okay, I, if you earn five thousand, ten thousand rupees a month, uh, out of which third, two third of it went to your rent. Uh, these things counted. But the point to talk about is uh, Professor Mohanty. 
it turned out he liked a little bit of classic rock and roll. And most of my other previous years interviews would have lasted 10 minutes. This guy was a white woman who went in here, so I didn't want to do anything. So, but why would you guys? I love management. See, I quit, uh, I left IIT and I was doing event management and doing marketing and sales. So, you know, I gave that story. So, what is Wall Street Journal? I'm like, yeah, okay. Uh, <clears throat> It's about music, I'm passionate about music, it's not a passion for me, and therefore I did this. So what bands do you like? I said, yeh machri phasne wala hai. She goes, well, how come he's asking about which band you like? So I said, you know the usual, so I didn't want to get too esoteric about naming some kufia bands. I said, you know, Pink Floyd and Kant and all that. So why do you want Pink Floyd? I said, if I don't make it right this time, I'm never going to make it. Because here is a professor who seems to be interested in talking to me. And then he actually asked me about music. So what is good music? Luckily that was my real house, so I told him, you know, there's creativity and there's dexterity, how well can you play? I was 80s and previous rock and roll guy, so I like dexterity, led music, I like the Joe Satyans and precision musicians and stuff like that. So I gave him a lot of jam and the other two professors, there are always three people. There's always an alumni, a senior person in the <coughs> in the panel, there's another professor and there's a third professor and they do rotations. The other two almost slept off and he spoke for 40 minutes. <laughs> I also felt bad for the professor and I said, how, how, how effed up must his life be on days like this when he's just to interviews all day. Uh, and that's how I made it. So again, uh, Yes, you have to clear cat. So there is a hygiene amount of prep work, you know. I'm saying a lot of people work hard, almost everybody works hard. Few people get lucky. Uh, and this will be the role of every step you go. You will go to great companies, you will appear for great interviews, in good small companies. But really random people will make it and some of the good ones will make it. There is data to prove that obviously they look at the HR, we look at grades and stuff and all. But that's still the shortlisting process. When you cross the threshold, I'm just saying that there's a lot of luck. That is not to say hands up in the air, ah, I let luck take over. <laughs> you have to work hard, you have to give it, you have to be worthy of the luck. Uh, but, uh, nonetheless, a lot of good people have a lot of bad things happen to them, a lot of bad people have a lot of good things happen to them, and all of the above. So I'm saying it's all random to a certain extent. But don't put yourselves down thinking I'm not worthy or anything. It's just it is bad luck, but don't let that just sit down and say, Oh, I'm a bad luck. There's no such thing as a bad luck. Everybody has an equal amount of luck too. Some have a little more at a certain time. Some at time. Okay, so so <clears throat> so that's one part. Are you guys uh, some of you heard this? Talk. So I'm going to talk about one more fun thing. Oh, by the way, uh, like Captain Picard said, uh, just feel free to stop me anywhere. And it, it can be as random as tell me as well. I'll try. <coughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's the seriousness with which you guys are taking all of this. But uh, so uh, <coughs> in this talk. Again, it was a funny one. They called me because uh, I've had some very funny experiences, even in my job. So let me get to the job part before I move on to the stop and what, what did I talk about. In Iron Calcutta, I was the bottom 50 of my batch of 200. I think I can be confident I was probably the bottom 25. Uh, and it didn't matter shit. I did well, I can't tell you well. So, because I had these two years of some sort of a work ex, uh, we have some processes in these, these schools called laterals, which means guys with work ex have a different set of interviews that start in advance because companies look for people with a little bit of work ex in a domain. My domain was obviously random marketing and stuff. But again, the CEO of a company then called SIFI, I don't think you guys will remember, it's almost there in the data, but they were the first company to register on NASDAQ and the first internet peak success in India. 
and the CEO had come to hire people and all these guys who had IT experience and all of that went up for the interview. And suddenly I was called by the placement rep that, hey, Dharish, you are also supposed to go for this interview. So I actually went in my chapel because I was like, you're supposed to wear your suit and all of that and go for your interview. Like you put on your best effort. Guys said, Jai, I said, Tera kuch nahi hone wala hai. So I did that. And I got lucky again uh, for the weird things I did. For the music, for the extra credits, for the conversations around not just my domain. Because weirdly, as luck would have it, the CEO and founder of the company, uh, he wanted to find, he wanted to launch gaming in India. There's a big investment firm, you must have heard of uh, SoftBank. They're one of the largest, like Sequoia, SoftBank, all of these guys. They were the big investors. They wanted to launch gaming in India. They wanted to replicate models from China, South Korea, and all of that. That was what you talk about gaming now. Uh, there were models in Korea that was huge and successful and monetized in those parts. And funnily, for whatever, he wanted to hire a guy who was weird. So he had a hardke requirement, and the guy had showed up hardke, and he said. Okay, you managed to get into I am, that's enough for me. And all and I was the only guy selected. Now this is clearly not my capability, right? I mean like, okay, I have a decent personality, I didn't crack any bad jokes in front of him, I shouldn't have, and I did. But uh, I was the only guy who got paid. And in those days, so imagine I stood, when I left my Rock Street Journal job and I went into I am Cal, I had gone from eight thousand rupees salary to ten thousand rupees salary, right? Still a lot, I think, you know, it was enough to have a good party life and share a good. And then I got a nice, so I was one of, because you got a lateral job, you get, in those days, uh, I got a nice, like an 8 lakh salary. I went mad. I said, now what will I do with this much money? <laughs> Every month I'm going to get some 40 grand or something, right? This is insane. <coughs> So, uh, even my brother, elder brother, he was so happy, he's like, my God, I've been working for three years and I'm still at half the salary because that's how life was, you know, you didn't get crazy salary, I mean, adjusted for inflation and whatever in the market. Uh, and then I went to Chennai and, and things like that. So, uh, so, again, more of the same story that uh, one of the things I would urge you guys to do is to be active. Don't expect the process to be the only thing that will help you. Uh, what would you now? One of the key things once you finish here, you will say, um, <coughs> Can I get some more? Yeah. One of the things uh, you will rely on is how much the system can help you, but you have to help yourself a lot. First question uh, Okay, how many of you are on Facebook? I heard Facebook is not cool anymore with the Gen Z. <laughs> How many of you are on Instagram? Oh yeah, there you go. Um, TikTok's banned, but I'm guessing all of you were on it at some point. Are you guys still running on it with the VPNs and stuff? <laughs> some of you. How many of you are on LinkedIn? You guys are serious? Okay. Make your LinkedIn profiles. Do you know what LinkedIn is? LinkedIn is where everyone puts their public resume out. LinkedIn is where it's a it's a social network networking platform, but it's a completely professional environment where you put your work, your resume, your connects, your conversations, your thoughts about work, uh, and you build your profile there. Create your profiles there. Make be active there. And, and uh, so what you will do there is start connecting with people. You know, you have to be reductive. Don't expect, while I said a lot of luck will happen. So the luck is the uncontrollable part. But there are things you can control, which is how much of yourself can you put out there in the social media of a professional environment that allows you to network and other people to evaluate you. So LinkedIn is probably the largest recruitment platform in the world. So they have all of that. So companies from every company in the world 
has a LinkedIn profile, the employees, everything. You can connect with them directly. Before that, just like you would not go out on a date, unlike me, how I get my interview, you don't go out on a date without grooming yourself. Groom yourself. Before you connect to anyone, make a nice profile. Don't put a picture like this or something. <laughs> put, put one nice profile. This is what you're wearing right now, it's perfect. Uh, or some such thing. Make a nice profile. Put your interest, put your resume out there as a profile. Put some passion into it. And don't be one demon. I love marketing. You're not really supposed to know much about marketing, right? I'm assuming all of you are freshers. I mean, yeah, you're doing your BBS, so yeah, you just going to go into the corporate world very soon. But put your passion bits out there. Not just about what you've studied, but about uh, what would you like about what music? Always remember the HR guy or anyone who's hiring you is just another human being. And while their job is to look at you and evaluate your thing, they have nothing to go on except your grades, right? And you don't. So, okay, the top 10 guys are secure, right? they have some decent grades. But even then, I mean, they are not they're looking for spunk. They're looking for some amount of uh, how much are you willing to be able to soak in? Are you curious? Are you hopefully not a morose guy? So this is not about being exuberant, this is not only. This is not about being extrovert. This is about just finding your strength of what is a human connect that you can do. Human connects are around passion. So you can talk about music, you can talk about theater. I'm not just saying those are only things. You can talk about marketing, you can talk about sales, you can say I just so I used to be asked, why do you want to join marketing? After my jobs, etc., I realized when I was going for the senior roles, I said, Why do you love marketing? I said, I love marketing. Actually, I love music to be first. If I had all the money in the world, this is not what I would be doing. I would be playing the guitar whether someone wants to listen to me or not. <laughs> because I can't play well and I know that but I don't care, I'm not doing it for others, I'm doing it for myself but going back to the point of marketing I used to tell them I love marketing because I love it that with my mind I can design some communication or some activities that can make people choose something over something else it is the power of playing with people's minds that gets me excited uh, so that was my thing. You have to think like that or something like that. Find you. You say I like operations. I just feel to so somebody who says, sir, operations is not so glamorous like marketing. I think it is. But it depends on if you find it interesting, then it is your wheelhouse. It is yours to make exciting and to present it in an exciting way. I don't know what you would say, but you might just have a point. Look, not everything is about exciting and crazy ads and cool ads and production and hanging with the stars. It is, it, it, it is the wheels of the bus, it is the wheels and the cogs and the gears of an organization that actually make business happen. It is not just the fluff communication. I find that is a role for me. It fits my personality. So you can choose your verticals. You can somebody say, I love analytics. Again, that's not glamorous. But you say, you know what, all marketing decisions are based on, made on hard analytics, on hard empirical data. Uh, and I want to give you a fun example. Uh, have, has anyone seen that ad, uh, <coughs> Dove Beauty Sketches? I want to show you that ad. Can we play that ad? And I'll tell you why. Uh, after the ad. Uh, Yeah, yeah. The beauty sketches. Mm -hmm. The middle one. Get one. Oh, a lot. The beauty sketches.
and describe you to someone and that you could sketch you very differently. So obviously this is all play acted. Whereas the data on science, and the scientific American, by the way, you guys could read, they write a lot of things. Uh, they've done research. And uh, It is a fact, we all think we are better than, not we all, a good 80% plus of us think we are better looking, smarter, cooler than we actually are. It is the reason why we all post 80,000 selfies a year. Uh, it is why, how good looking or how not so good looking or whatever, the exuberance is always there. It is true for a few people who may have a lower self-esteem. But the fact is, most people don't. And this is a science article on behavioral science. It's a real how I love all this stuff. But the video went viral, right? This is the data. But there's another data. And I call this the Anybody believes in astrology? Yes? Okay, I'll be your astrologer today. Uh, what's your name? Saju. Huh? Saju. 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 Okay. So Saju, I'm <coughs> an astrologer and uh, I'm going to tell you stuff like uh, about you. I think you work very hard when you, mostly when you're at home. Uh, uh, I think your parents love you a lot, but they push you very hard. Uh, they, they love you, but they don't think you're doing enough. They like you. Uh, and most of your relatives feel that way about you. And I can sense that uh, you're not that happy. And. Uh, you know what I'm telling you right now? I'm just telling you stuff you want to hear. That's what astrology is. That's what that is. You <laughs> <laughs> are uh, more beautiful than you think you are. You know, man, you deserve more. That works. I've done many campaigns where I've used that technique. You deserve more. You are the You are <laughs> so the science of that is very clear. In fact, there's a technique called cold reading. The experts who will tell you very clear details, who will do cold reading and tell you that good break, what is your, you know, expired grandfather, grandmother, and they can speak for them. And I'm hearing a deal, and and she wants to say she loves you, and and I think there's a picture of her in the in the living room. Of course, there's a picture of her in every language. <laughs> I'm talking about it, right? So, 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 you have to always go one level deeper. The insight is not, the marketing insight is. So, they are wrong about the article. Yeah. Not, in a sense, does try to get it wrong. Of course, it gets it wrong because you are less beautiful than you think you are. But, Dove knew that they wanted to tell people exactly the opposite. And that is how things go viral. So, so I was talking about analytics. So you have to look at the right analytics. So yeah, if you look at analytics and you went and did research, you'll get the support. No matter where you do it in the world, you'll get that. No, we can't make this sad. The analytics and the data show that people are actually more confident about this. There are ways to study this. Uh, <coughs> But they made the ad and they did the right thing, right? You can do a lot of things like that. So anyway, my point was, find what you think is the excitement. We talk about stuff like that. And you don't, so the next thing is, you're not limited to, no matter what you've studied, what you've gotten to till here, there are 10,000 jobs now that didn't exist. I run a company on a business.
and we can fire as well as fires of the colleagues and the guests. So how to handle that? How to keep calm? That's what I was talking to them this morning. So as uh, Sir has said, you know, you need to try and uh, get into meditation.